there, it's Pete Cosman, the Angel Encourager. I'm knowing everybody's doing well today. I'm hoping some people will join me and then we can have some fun tonight. We can, hey, Jay Butler, how you doing? Enjoyed your show earlier today. Sorry, that was the first time I'd ever uh, clued in. I'm going to have to do some more about that. Hey, everybody, thank you for joining me tonight. How's everybody doing? Is everybody doing well? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I so appreciate the Taylor Swift. That made my day. It totally did. If everybody, anybody isn't... If anybody isn't following at jbutler76, you need to follow my friend there. He's a lot of fun. So, <laughs> and he always enjoys coming on mine too. Hey, say Bobby, how are you doing today? Good evening to you as well. And it is, it's about the evening that you make it. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed being there. So what I want to talk today, I mean, I made some notes here. So you can see me kind of glancing down because I'm going to be looking at my notes. I want to make sure I kind of cover everything I really wanted to. I want to talk about five keys to joyful living, you know, because I talk about joy an awful lot. And you know, why do I talk about joy so darn much? What is that all about? Well, joy is the frequency, it's the, it's the vibration that universal mindset is really found at. That's, hey, hey, Evelyn, how you doing my, this evening, my darling? And, and when you're in a state of joy, that's where, you know, that's where universal powers, however, hey, how you doing, Sketches? I'm so glad you tuned in. However you think of the, the universal connection, whether that's God, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, the angels, you know, the, the universe. Hey, Wendy, how you doing this evening, sweetheart? Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody joining me tonight. So, you know, I'm very interdenominational. It's how you, however you connect. Hey, Donna, how you doing tonight? And oh, Sketches, you invited followers. You're so sweet to me. I appreciate that. So that's why it's so important to me to really talk about joy a lot, because that's when you get that, that clear connection with all that is. That's when you have clarity. Clarity really, really, and I'm not kidding you, comes to you when you're in joy. That's when it happens. I mean, if you've ever noticed before, when you're in fear and anxiety and worry and doubt and depression, you feel lonely. You could be in a room full of 3,000 people and feel like you're the only person there. Hey, Lenomra, I hope I said that right. <laughs> so, and it's because you're, you're cut off from universal connection because universal, universal connection will never be in fear, anxiety, and worry. You know, we're even told in the Bible that we are not given the spirit of fear. You know, that's why, hey, Mainstream, thank you so much for joining. That's why when you're in that state of fear, you know, it feels so bad. <laughs> it, it feels so bad because it's not your, it's not your normal state of being. That's not how you're designed. You're not designed to be like that. So that's why it feels bad to you. That's your that's your body, mind, spirit system telling you, hey, you know, the, you need a little bit of a correction because that's not really who you are. So that's why I talk about you know, the state of joy so much. So I want to give you five keys to joyful living. And Jay, thank you so much for inviting followers. Y'all are so good to me. I just love you so much. All of you people, and especially Jay. I, you know, Jay knows Jay knows I got some special love for him. Hey, Nanny Ford, thank you so much for joining today. Day. so so glad for you to have so the first one oh <laughs> you caught me live the great 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 I'm so so proud on oh, akashic inspire i love having my akashic readings uh, read that, that would be interesting to, to have it have other people read i've only had one person read it. it's amazing to me so the first one you know that's really something we're really taught in the western hemisphere especially is it's all about our effort you know we're, we're told like this almost like this script we're supposed to have in life you know about get good grades and then you know you're supposed to fall in love in high school and then you're supposed to go to college and you're supposed to you know marry your high school sweetheart you're supposed to have 2.4 children and buy the colonial and you know work for 40 years and then retire and then die you know there's like this script that we have to you know really are supposed to follow and it really clues into all this effort that we're supposed to do all these you know, things that we're supposed to really adhere to and, and how it's all up to our own action it's all up to our own pushing forth well that's really not the way life actually works life really works from our focus you know if I, I've talked about before about the reticular activating system that's in our brain and what that is it's this system in our brain that works on picking out the points of data in our life that are relevant to us so how does the brain figure out what points of data are relevant to us because hey redefining rich haven't had you in here for a while so, so thank you so much for joining us you know because at any point in time you know there's just billions of pieces of data that are coming to you, you know, sounds air pressure you know, the, the the temperature in the room on each different part of your of your body each different part of your body is at a different temperature smells you know sounds there's just all this data that's coming into you at one time even people interacting with you phones ringing whatever it's happening there are billions of points of data happening around you at any one point in time so how does your brain process all these points of data at one time. Well, what it does is you have this particular activating system that pulls out the relevant pieces of data that are surrounding you. So how does it figure out what's relevant? 
It figures out what's relevant by what you're focusing on, by what you're expecting, what you're believing, what you're thinking, what you're speaking with your words, because your brain truly knows that you're in charge. Now you may not know you're in charge, but your brain knows that you're in charge. So it says, well, if this human being or this spirit that's in this human, human body is focusing on this one thing, that must be what's important. So if you're in fear, your reticular activating system finds all the points of data that correspond to fear. If you're in joy, guess what? Your reticular activating system pulls out all the points of data that are in joy. There's no judgment from the reticular activating system. It's simply corresponding with what you're focusing on. And everything is surrounding you at one time. You are surrounded by challenges. You're surrounded by opportunities. You're surrounded by fearful things. You're surrounded by exciting things. You're surrounded by love and hope. You're surrounded by despair and anger. It's So it's really up to you. What are you going to focus on? What do you want to bring more into your life? What makes you feel better? Because you know, you're the one that gets to live your life. You are the point of reference for everything that happens to you. One thing I always say to people is like, you're going to carry you wherever you go. Why not go ahead and have some fun? So that's how that really works. You know, it pulls in those relevant pieces of data. So that life really comes from not your effort, but your focus, because you can only act upon the information that you receive in your brain. I mean, does that not make sense? That's why I'm trying to pull down. I try to make the idea that you know, this whole mindful idea and the law of attraction idea and all these things that you've heard of come more into the scope of where it actually makes sense to you, you know, because you hear all these things and, and, and it's relevant, but then you start going, I want you to be able to take these, these, this pieces of information, information out onto the street. That's why I often with my angels, I call them angels on the street, because I don't want you to leave the angels or universal mindset or God or Buddha or Muhammad or Allah or Jesus or whatever you connect. I don't want you to leave that energy at the church door or at the meditation room door. I want you to take it out into your everyday life. Because that's where the, I mean, if we're constantly surrounded by these spirits of love and this energy of love, they want to be with you in every moment, whether you're picking out, you know, a shirt or whether you're dealing with some kind of a challenge or ran out of gas or, or you're not feeling well or dealing with somebody that, you know, uh, maybe is, you know, passing or something. They, they want to be with you in every moment of life. So it's really about you know where you come from and, and the viewpoint that you have to how you connect. But it's so important for me to you know really talk about this about stepping into joy and having that universal connection, and for you to really understand and get that the angels or, or universal the universal powers heaven is with you at all times and always interested in you and frankly a little bored. And do you know why they're bored? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. The, you're, they are bored because we have free will. So they're not going to do anything for us unless we ask because the brain knows we're in charge and heaven knows we're in charge of this system or this place that we are right now. We are because we are the point of reference you know, for everything that happens. It's just like in a courtroom where you have two witnesses that experience the same thing and they relate it in completely different ways. It's because they experience different experiences in the same moment from their viewpoints, from their expectations, from their beliefs, from the way they see life. And that's exactly the way that, that it works for you. I mean, you can have the same, you can have a completely different experience and be with the same, and you, and you know this is true. How are you doing, Susan Mello? So yeah, the first part is really that the, the magic is in the focus and not on your effort. And so what that really does for you is it takes away that whole idea because when we're so much in this effort mode, and I know everyone here has experienced this and I have too, where you really desire something, but you have no clue about how to bring it into your life. You know that you're worth it. You know that you want it. You even kind of know that if you can, if you can feel and, and want it, there has to be a way for you to get it, but you're clueless as to how to bring it in. Well, the whole thing of it is flipping the script and realizing that it's not up to your effort to make it happen. It's simply up to your focus because it's like I always tell my clients and I'll give a little sneak peek and then of course I say it all the time. First, it's about you finding the focus of what it is that you want. Yes, I know you've been there because we all have, girl. We're having the same experience. First, you focus. I always going to help me because I am familiar. Oh, I love Michael. So yeah, it's about you know having that focus of what it is that you want to bring into your life. It's about stepping into joy, and then taking the inspired action and walking into faith. And that's really what I was going to talk about next is taking that inspired action 
uh, if there are any other angels re re redefining rich, it's really about you know what it is that you want to bring into your life. The interesting thing about the angels for me is I see that each one has sort of like a different personality and a different aspect of our life, a different facet. I almost see it as like a gem with a different facet. So it's the same gem, it's just a different facet on that gem. And so, uh, hey Kypster, how you doing? So it's really depending upon what part of life that you really want to work on. And it's really interesting when you really kind of get into the fourth and fifth dimension of it, or really I guess fifth or sixth dimension of it, you know, it's really all the same, you know, because like I always look at life as like a fabric right here. And if you pinch up any part and pull it up like a mesh, it pulls up the rest of it. So it doesn't matter what part of your life you really work on or what aspect it's going to bring all of your life really up because it kind of up levels you, upgrades you. Like if you work out more physically, then it makes you expect more in other parts of your life. Or if you do better financially, it makes you expect more in other parts of your life. So it doesn't matter, you know, what part of your life you really work on. So I was in the, uh, so yeah, so it's really you know important to go ahead and work on the part of life that for you is the easiest to work on. That's why I really work out with my physical because that's you know really really very easy. Once you get into that, it's almost like an addiction. I was telling. This earlier today I'm almost like addicted to it I have to sometimes not make myself not go to the gym and that's how crazy it is so the first one is about the magic is not in the effort it's in the focus so that's what I want you to do and when I say the focus I want to make sure that you don't focus on what you think you need to bring in what you want like I was speaking with a client not too long ago and she wanted this one particular thing and she thought that she needed a job and an apartment to get it she really wanted safety for her family and I said well does getting the job make you excited and she said no I said does getting the new apartment make you excited and she said no and I said well does having safety and protection for your family make you excited and she said yes I said then that's what I want you to focus on I don't want you to focus on the fact that you need to get a job and you need to get an apartment in order to make your family safe because and the reason I say that is because look for those points of bliss Look for those points of joy. Look for those points of excitement. Look for those points of passion because you know what that is? That's the secret sauce. That's, that is spiritual guidance. That's what that is. That's why it feels so fun when you get passionate about something, when you get excited about something, when you get joyful about something. That is spirit guiding you saying, this is what you kind of want to focus on. And you know, that's why sometimes things that we're excited or passionate about can you know almost be a little bit scary or they can feel really out of the box or others might even say oh you can't do that and the reason is because it's coming from universal mindset it's not coming from human mindset so it's coming from it from a completely different way of this is actually the shortest path to take you from where you want to where you are to where you want to be so find the joy and passion in everything girl that is exactly right redefining rich that is the, that is the way to work and so I you know I I have sort of like a monitoring system and everybody the secret sauce that's right I have and everybody has this <laughs> you're so sweet darling I've been right here darling you well actually I've been growing so it's really interesting if you go onto um, facebook.com and you go under my private well not private but but my personal page Pete Casaboon I pasted um, on my Instagram today and I also forwarded it to my Twitter uh, helps with uh, Universal mindset and joy, is that what you mean, redefining rich? But anyway, if, you know, I'll watch for your question as, as I keep going. If you will look on my uh, Instagram or if you look on my Facebook or my Twitter or whatever, you'll see a post I did today. What it was was I had to, re, I had to redo my driver's license. In fact, I'll tell you what, I will show it to you because this is really, really interesting. I had to redo with joy and passion. Uh, absolutely, joy and passion. Uh, really, it, it depends on you know. It depends on what your how like like passion would really be about, be about energy. Archangel Uriel, uh, <laughs> Archangel Uriel will help us with that energy. Uh, passion is really with Archangel Jophiel. You know, she really brings in that passion. Uh, so does Archangel Haniel really brings in sort of that Lord, that kind of mis mysterious passion. So it depends on what kind of passion you're really looking for. Uh, for me, I would say the Archangel Jophiel would be a great one to start with because she really declutters our mind. Um, and Archangel Haniel helps us to uh, really bring in the, the new mystery. And Archangel Uriel helps us with uh, Jophiel. Yeah, and Jophiel is actually G-O-P-H-I-E-L. So Jophiel and Uriel would be amazing ones because Jophiel will help you to declutter the mind. And Uriel will help you to 
uh, work with the new energies that are going through because that's really the interesting thing is you become more spiritual you know you start dealing with a lot more energies and it can be a little jinky at first you know and that's why a lot of times when you see people uh, you find a lot of people that don't really know how to work with their spiritual energy um, but they but they're getting a lot of spiritual energy and usually one of two things happens with those people if they don't really know how to deal with that energy they usually gain a lot of weight because it's almost think of it almost like an electric wire if you know if it's not strong enough of a wire to handle the electricity what will happen is it'll get more insulation so that's what the fat is or you'll find them very skinny but they usually have a lot of joint problems so that's usually what happens with people that you know have a lot of spiritual energy but really don't know how to handle it so what happened today was I had to redo my driver's license and I thought it was really quite interesting you know to to look at the different aspects and so you're looking at a range of I, I guess we do licenses I have to think how far apart do you do licenses I'll even have to look uh, I can't even uh, I guess they're about four years apart so this is really quite fascinating to me so here's three of my driver's licenses and of course I'll I'm going to hide my my personal information because you're really not supposed to put it out there but anyway I want you to look at these three different pictures so the one over here that's the one I just took today but isn't it amazing how joy changes changes you I mean which guy would you ask out I know I would ask this guy out right here and that's the oldest of the three but isn't that amazing how you can just see I mean really in the first two ones you can almost see how dead my eyes were and that's because these are all three me all three of these are me and isn't that amazing I just was really amazing to me how what a difference what well, yeah so yeah sketches it's probably just you not knowing how to deal with that spiritual energy so I thought that was very interesting today I, I, and, and what it really resonated for me was just the faces of joy and how joy can so completely change your life because um, I'm just gonna say right now I am almost like a dating magnet right now you know it's just amazing to me just yeah. without even with that effortless it just seems like people are just like coming to me and, and uh, I'm just kind of sitting back and being like what is this you know I mean? <laughs> yes thank you you know it's, it's something I'm almost not quite used to having all the attention I'm having lately so you know, that's why spiritual energy could be something that you oh thank you spiritual energy can really be something that you really have to kind of you know it's not as easy as you think it would be it's something you have to kind of get used to and that's why with sketches I think for you it is it's about you really getting a lot of spiritual energy and so so it's just about you just you know learning how to handle that energy work with Archangel Uriel ask ask Archangel Uriel to come into your life and really show you how to you know ground yourself and to allow that energy to flow because you know that's really what it's all about I know that um, last last year I really started asking for more energy and I knew what I was asking for and then I went to Key West and I went to this place called the butterfly house I don't know if anybody's ever been there but it was a, just a magical place in fact there's pictures of me there just bathed in this angelic light it's amazing um, yeah so it, it just bathed, and nobody else was it was just me every single picture I was bathed in this light I mean and I was literally just crying the whole time but what happened was after that day I was in Key West for like four more days and I was like crying and uh, how do you by talking to them darling I'll talk about that here in just a little bit but I mean I was crying and then I was angry and then I was frustrated and then I was like yelling and then I was like laughing and I literally one day had to had to dance for 15 hours straight there was so much energy coming through uh, cool there was so much energy coming through that you know it was either it was either explode or dance so what I'm saying to you is that getting more spiritual energy can absolutely be something and I want I want you, you know, to, to honor and know that and just you know be okay with however it it manifests in you and just allow your yourself to to learn how to and if, and if anybody wants to you know private message me on facebook.com the angel encourager oh and by the way I have redone my website and I would so adore if y'all would take a look so my website is the angel encourager.com and it's just so much more fun I was kind of embarrassed about my website in fact I did a video on my website sucks and it really did I was just, it was just awful it was so terrible but now I'm kinda of actually a little bit proud of it and I'm working on I would love anybody's pointers on it I've got some new programs that are on there see so if you want to just kinda of look around it's got some of my different media uh, some testimonials oh thank you I'm, I'm glad yes the angel encourage.com thank you Wendy you're so sweet so yeah there's all kinds of ways you can contact me I would love if you went to Facebook uh, dot com the angel encourager got on my newsletter private message me there I would love it if you check out my new website and take a look at it and just tell me what you think about it you know because you know, it's a work in process it's something that 
I really want it to be an expression of who I am, and that's what my old website didn't really do. It really didn't express, you know, who I am and really get me out there to people because I, you know, I just know that there's so much energy and so much that just, just wants to come through me out there to just help the world, you know, because, the because you know, you hear so many people right now saying about how the world is in such despair, and that's just not how I see it. You know, people often ask me, you know, how do you see the future of the world? I see it as bright and shiny as heck. But it's depending upon what we see and what we expect and what we believe to come forward. And that's what I expect and believe and see coming forward for this world. I mean, you know, nature always finds a way to survive. And so no matter what we do to it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rock it and make it through. So, uh, And somebody was asking me, about how do we connect to the angels? You talk to them, darling. You talk to them. You just start talking to them. And you can study them. You can, you know, look up information. I have some information if you'd like to ask me any questions. Um, and you just connect with them, you just talk to them, you, you ask them questions, you bring them into your everyday life. That's why people, I had somebody ask me today, they, they asked me, do you pray? And I'm always sort of in a praying meditative mode. You know, I'm always kind of self-monitoring myself by saying, you know, what kind of state am I in? Where am I expecting? Where am I believing? How am I feeling? You know, because your body, mind, spirit system is this amazing system that's always, it's like a monitoring system that lets you know where you are with universal connection at all times. So if I start feeling kind of off and kind of down, I know that that means I'm not I'm not in that state of joy and I'm not thinking about whatever situation I'm in the same way that universal connection is. And that's not judging it, it's just knowing that there's another way, there's a more loving way to look at something and it's when you look at things through the eyes of love that you see the opportunities in it. You see the ways that, that you can grow and that others can grow. And that's it's just an amazing new way of looking at life. Not that you always have to be there, but it just makes life a little bit easier, a little bit simpler, and a little bit more fun. So anyway, <laughs> and that's really what this, this scope is about. So I've covered number one. We've got four more to go. Let's see if we can get through this. So uh, I've kind of touched a little bit on this. But the, the second one is life is literally what you make of it. It literally is the way that you feel about it. It's the way that you approach it. You know, it, it's the old saying, you know, don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. So things are as big as you make them or they're as small as you make them, you know, because even the quantum physicists are telling us right now, and I love bringing science and these different modalities into spirituality. You're right, life is what you make of it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy, you're so sweet. So, you know, the physicists are telling us nowadays that everything is just energy packets. Everything is energy, and that's exactly the way it works. You know, when I talk about frequency and vibration, that's really what I'm talking about, and higher energies, and I guess what you consider lower energies and our energy here on the human plane, it's all about energy packets. So it, what I'm really talking about there is that there is no difference to the angels between, say, like a torn up Volkswagen and a brand new, brand new Mercedes. There's no difference to the angels between like a bad relationship and a good relationship. There's no difference to the angels between a button and a castle. We're the ones that give it meaning. We're the ones that say it has value or it doesn't have value. We're the ones that say we want to bring it into our life or we don't want it in our life. We're the ones that say it's big or small. We're the ones that say it's expensive or it's cheap. We're the ones that say it's hard or it's easy. We're the ones. Because to the angels, it's just energy. It's all, it's simply, to the, to the angels, it's almost just like changing the dial on a radio station. Do you know how simple it is to change the dial on a radio station? It's the exact same way for the angels. That's the way they look at it. Because you can't bring something into your life unless you're an energetic match for it. Because if you did bring it into your life, you'd lose it. That's why... 80% of the people that win the lottery are in worse financial shape five years down the road because they don't energetically come into line with that newfound wealth. And they, they have to get rid of it. And you've seen people you've seen people that have not had money and then all of a sudden they got some kind of a windfall. And they're in this mad dash to get rid of that money as quickly as they can. They make poor financial decisions. They like, you know, go out and do things that they know are going to just be wasteful. They, they don't buy things of value. They don't invest in things. You see them like going out to eat five times during the day and then throwing half the food away and, and buying, you know, fatty things like with, I'm saying like with clothes that they'll never wear again and, you know, buying more cars than they need. And you see them just, right. They, well, that's true. That's absolutely true. Reading. Yeah, they feel tugged from their tribe, they're, they're, but they're going from other people's expectations and other people's levels of what success is. They're not living in their own truth. And that's a whole other subject, redefining riches about living in your own truth. Um, 
but yeah, so it's the, it's it's about becoming an energetic match first to what you want because think of it almost as though uh, like it, you become you become the energetic match and then life catches up with you. Not about you catching up to life. Life is always catching up to you. You aren't ever catching up to life. So whatever. You know, well, I'm, I was about to I was about to go into another one of my things, so I won't go into that quite yet. So anyway, it really is literally how you think of it and what you make of it. How important you think things are. How big you think things are. How small you think things are. How hard you think things are. How easy things think things are. So matching the confidence and self worth. That's absolutely right. That's where it all comes from. Is judgment, self worth, the confidence. You know the 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 uh, the self esteem. You know the, the the what you allow yourself to have. Have. Um, you kind of mentioned the tribe before. It's about you know being. Are you going to be better than the tribe or worse? For and some of you are waiting for me to use them because I'm telling you, say Baba, they are bored. They are bored to tears because you have to call it forth. I often see this vision of us living in the guard shack up front with no plumbing, and there's an entire mansion staffed full of people in the backyard waiting for us to step into it. And it's exactly the way it is. Exactly the way it is. And it's, <laughs> isn't that awesome? So take advantage of that, my darling. Take advantage of that. Know that they are calling you forth. And the four archangels. So I'm getting for you, it was Raphael, it was Uriel, it was Ariel, and it was Michael. Those are the four that I really feel, see Bobby, that was they were with you at that point. So it's really fascinating. I love that. So um, the next one is about uh, you can write the menu or be on it. That's something that's, that uh, Susie Orman really talks about. And what that's about is really, it, it, it's about, it's your experience and are you in an active or a reactive mode. <laughs> you love the mansion image? I'm so glad you did. And what I really mean by that is it's, I'm going to give you a little secret. Y'all ready for a secret? Who's ready for a secret right now? Anybody ready for a secret? Right now, I'm just going to go ahead. I, I can't hold it back. I can't wait for y'all. <laughs> right now is an amazing time to be mindful. Okay, good. Right now is an amazing time to be mindful. Do you know why? Because so few people are mindful. Almost everybody, at least 90%, if not more, people are in a reactive mode. And what that means is they're waiting to see what comes to them so that they can react to it. They are not in active mode. So if you walk into a room with the clear, focused intention, not of how is it going to happen, who's going to help you, what tools are you going to use, blah, 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 blah. If you walk into a room, and you can think of this in your life as well, but if you walk into a room with a clear, focused intention of this is how it's going to come out, there are no two ways about it, you are steadfast and firm of this is the way it's going to work. And believe me, I work for an attorney, and I know it's, you know, she gets what she wants because she walks into that courtroom knowing, I don't know how, but this is the outcome, and that's exactly what happens. So if you walk into your life, if you walk into a room full of people, if you walk into any situation, with the clear, focused intention of this is going to be the result. Don't get hung up on how it's going to be the result. But you focus on that, you're going to get your way. It's because you're the one being mindful. Because that's how everything is going to energetically align to. And you're going to be the active you're going to be the active part. You know, think of it almost like a pinball machine. You're the, you know, you're you're not you're not the little ball being bounced back and forth. You're you're actually you know one of the little flippers. You know that's that's flipping. Actually, you're the little button that's pushing the flippers. <laughs> so really, you know, keep that in mind. You don't want to be the little pinball. You want to be the you want to be the the you know the little flipper that's flipping it. Just to <laughs> good. I'm so glad. But yeah, so right now is an amazing time to be mindful. So shh, keep it quiet. No, actually, go ahead and tell everybody because wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing if we all became mindful, if we all came from a mindset of how powerful we truly were, are, if we all called forth. Because I'm going to tell you something else. Mm, I love doing this. So this is something else that the angels, now this is what the angels have told me. And it was Redefining Rich was talking a little bit more about your truth. So what I want you to do, anything that I say to you, I want you to, you know, listen if, if, you, if, if you'd like to, to what I have to say. But you make sure it resonates for you, you know, because each one of our truths is our truth. And this is my truth and that's all I can, that's all I can express is my truth. So I don't want you to like, you know, just verbatim take everything I say. You, you monitor by, does it feel right, does it feel wrong, or, or however. But so anyway, 
in quantum physics, you know, they really found out it was really interesting when they were, you know, uh, when they were they were dealing with like, you know, uh, uh, what, was the universe expanding or contracting? They suddenly realized that there was a whole lot more out there than we could even tell. So they've they've estimated that there's not, that 96 percent of what we can measure out there is what we call dark matter or dark energy. And what that means is we don't have a clue what it is. We can measure it's there, but we don't have a clue what it is. Now just, just get the concept of that means that only 4% of what we can actually measure as being there, we actually know what it is. So what the angels have told me, that 96% is like the soup that's sitting out there waiting. It's almost like the ingredients in your kitchen sitting in the cupboard that are waiting for you to mix it up and make it into your life by focusing on it. Now just imagine if everything we're surrounded by right now, everything we use, everything we use in our everyday life, the clothing we wear, the food we eat, the houses we live in, the cars we drive, whatever, if everything we, we have in this life right now that we use is only 4% of what we actually know of, and the other 96% is just sitting out there waiting for us to call it in, how much abundance is there? I mean, do you get a little bit of shivers right now when you think about that? So I, that's kind of another tangent I was really kind of going on to, but it's really about how you see how I see how the universe and the angels really make me approach life. I approach life from this aspect of there is much so much more there that we can call forth because I mean, think about it. Like in the Bible, Jesus did some pretty cool stuff. And guess what Jesus said? What did Jesus say? He said we would do far greater things than him. Well, isn't it about time we did that? Isn't it about time that we started proclaiming who we are? Isn't it about time we started calling it forth? Because didn't Jesus call it forth? And I'm not saying that you know, I'm Jesus or anybody else is, but I'm just saying that was what he said. He did some pretty cool stuff. You know, he fed 5,000 people with hardly any food. He turned water into wine. You know, he healed people. He did, you know, he took care of, I mean, think of the masses of people. There's really not all that much about it in the Bible, but if you really think of the concept of how many people followed him, and he gave them housing, and he fed them, and he gave them water, and they had to have a place to go to the bathroom, and they had to have clothes, and they had to have whatever that was. You know, and, and, and think about how he called that forth in a time when there wasn't that much abundance like we have now. I mean, think about if you go into anybody's closet, even in the, the poorest of neighborhoods, and they have 20 or 30 things to wear, and you look in their refrigerator and they have food. Well, that didn't happen back in Jesus' day, and yet he was able to take care of all those people. And how did he do it? He did it with the, with the force of his expectation, belief, and calling it forth. And he said that we would do far greater things than him. How freaking exciting is that? Now, isn't it time we started proclaiming that and standing in that truth? Because that's truth, babies. That's truth. So anyway, it's your own experience. Is what, it's whether you're going to be in active or reactive mode. Uh, the, other, the, the fourth one is about how others and everything that comes to you is a mirror of yourself. So that's really coming to life from a point of really no judgment and really unconditional love. And it, oh my gosh. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, my friends, that puts you at such a point of power when you're not sitting there, because what happens if you don't not doing that? You're thinking, I am in this pitiful place because so and so did this to me, or because I'm too fat, or I'm too old, or I'm too, you know, thin, or I'm too young, or I'm too whatever. You know, we 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 take our own power away by saying it's because of this situation or because of this person that I'm not who I want to be. Well, when you really live from a point of life of just seeing that we're being we're uh, being mirrored to by the world and by other people by the energy that we put out, then what do we have to change? The only thing we can change our own energy, you know, because we show the world how to treat us by how we treat ourselves. And that is so true. I mean, I had, I've talked about this before, but I had kind of a, to me, it was kind of a, a bad breakup a few months ago. And I was, I was really in that relationship judged or shamed, but I was mindful enough and I had enough mindful friends calling me forth. And it's a pain in the butt sometimes to have mindful friends because even Pete wants to like wallow in it every now and then. And I'll go call one of my friends and they won't let me for even a second stay in that state. You know, they pull me right out. It's like such a pain because I, even I want to kind of wallow just a little bit sometimes. <laughs> But anyway, it was about realizing that if, if that person judged or shamed me, that meant that I was judging or shaming me. 
and I am, I'm getting shivers right now on my shoulders, which is my, my sign of universal connection. That's when the angels get excited. That right there was so freeing and so amazing to me to realize that I still had that judgment and that shame within myself. And if I could find it, and it's, it's about number one, recognizing it. And then just, you know, asking universal connection. And just, you know, once you start realizing an energy, then you can start letting it go. And ever since I've done that, everything has exploded. My businesses have exploded. I have more relationships. I have more people throwing themselves at me than I've ever. It's almost like I'm going to have to go into a demanifestation mode. <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> I'm going to have to start getting rid of stuff because I don't even know what to do, you know, with all the stuff that's really coming. But it's, it's really about me being able now to choose rather than being chosen, you know. So it's, it's I mean, it's about stepping into your power. It's about, I mean... Oh my gosh, y'all, I am, I am telling you, it is really, you know, so that's, it's really about when you recognize that and you really come from a space of unconditional love, you know, because when you're saying, if so-and-so hadn't treated me like that, I wouldn't be this person. You're really putting this conditional love of, I can't be this person unless you treat me, treat me this way. Well, when you start saying, you know what, I'm going to love you no matter how you treat me and I'm just going to love myself. Well, you free that person. Guess who else you free? You free you. You free you to be the powerful being you are. You stand in your truth as you desire yourself to be, regardless of what anybody else thinks or says or does. You stand in your own power. You stand in your own truth. You stand in your own joy. It's not about somebody else. You have this whole ideal, especially in, in, in Western Romanticism, about the other person completing you. You are already complete. You are already complete. Archangel Haniel teaches us how we already have the yin and the yang energy in us, the male and the female. And of course, it's wonderful to have, you know, a relationship with someone, but it's not about completing it. It's about finding somebody to express joy through. It's just one more way to find joy in life. So don't ever come to a relationship from a state of, I need this person to make me whole. Because when you do that, the surest way towards unhappiness is to expect somebody else to make you happy because that's not how we're built we're not built to we can't constantly know what it takes to make the other person happy that's an that's an unreasonable and an impossible role for anybody to take no matter how much you love somebody you're always going to let them down at some point regard you know it just it doesn't matter how how wonderful of a person are you know, because you look at any of the most amazing people that have ever been in, 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 in the world. I mean, there are people that say bad things about Mother Teresa, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, I have read bad reviews about Mother Teresa. So if that girl couldn't have come through life without somebody thinking that, that she was, you know, other than an amazing person, then, you know, so what I'm saying to you is, is, you know, don't be looking at somebody else to complete you or make you whole because you already are. And watch, and when you see other people reacting and treating you in a certain way, instead of saying, how dare you treat me like that, be like, what is it in me that's making you react to me in that way? Oh, good. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. See? And children and babies, you know, they don't have all those social norms. They don't have all those things on them that tells them how to deal with people. You know, they, they react to people how they intuitively know to react. So, you know, animals, children, babies, you know, they don't have that social conditioning of how to treat people. If you, if you, if you are in line with them and, and, and you're, you're connecting with them, they express that. If you're not, they don't. So that's a wonderful thing, Skitches, because they're a great monitor. Children, babies, uh, animals, especially if they're not real domesticized. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. See, so see how in the flow you already are? Because, you know, nature is a great way to really see if you're in the flow. You know, for me, um, it's usually like birds flying in front of my windshield. Then I know that I'm really in line. It was, hey, Omeris, how you doing, sweetie? You've always loved children. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Uh, I had an experience one time. I was out, out in the back county. I used to drive out the back county roads a lot. And I was really, I guess I was really in the flow. Bugs like you too, yes. I <laughs> know, it's like all of nature, isn't it? So I was driving down this country road. It's going to be about 30 miles an hour. And on the right side of the road, and this is no, and it just, it just kind of freaked me out. It was funny. There was literally a deer. There was, it was either a woodchuck or it was something about that size. And there was a squirrel. And there were, there were two blackbirds. And they were all sitting right next to each other on the right side of the road. And the, I mean, I was just looking and like, and when do you see like these animals just sitting there? 
And then all of a sudden, all of them just crossed the road right in front of me very slowly. And I was just, I was just amazed, absolutely amazed. I was like, when do you ever see, it was like the synchronized movement of all these animals. And it was just, so what I'm saying to you is watch for signs from nature. Watch for signs from children and from bugs and from you know and start say, showing because nature is always in line with spirit. You know, I mean, now sometimes we can domesticize animals and we can domesticize children too. You know what I mean by we can really kind of break their their universal connection. But you know, the wilder something is, the more universal connection it has. And when it detects your universal connection, it will absolutely interplay with you. And you can ask for signs and symbols, and that can be your signs and symbols. Some, some great signs and symbols are numbers and that type of thing. And that's a really interesting topic to really talk about on my new website, which I want everybody to go check out for me if they will and tell me what they think at theangelencourager.com. It's brand new, just kind of went up today. I'm really starting these whole new series around around spiritual numbers, uh, starting with like 111, 222, 333, and that type of thing. So I would love for you to just take a look at my, my, my go to my shop and just tell me about what you think about some of my products. Because I really, I want to hear that feedback about what people are looking for, what resonates with them. Um, and I would love for you, so I read, oh, oh cool, I love that. So, you know, I would also love for you to go to facebook.com, The Angel Encourager, and get on my free newsletter, which goes out every Sunday. And message me there. Oh, you see feathers, that's, oh my God. Gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, please check out my new website. I'm so excited about you. Highly drawn to five. You know, five is a really very powerful number. It's a, it's a very powerful number, uh, really dealing it with like solidity and, and still in that movement, you know, because uh, usually either the number is three or the number seven or really like the, kind of the completion numbers. But very, but if you think about the number five, it's very long down the path. So you've already come very far down the path and it's still is very energetic number, you know, it's, and it's a, it's a number with a lot of structure to it. So if you really think about that, you know, five, that's, that's an amazing number for you to get. So I'm very excited for you fours and ones well ones are very much about you know the beginning of movement the very beginning and fours you know because three is like the trinity you know the the the, the before during and after you know the, the trinity you know you can think of the holy trinity well the four is like the next step it's almost like taking that it's almost like you've gotten to a certain level and now you're stepping you're stepping into the next the next point you know and fours have a lot of numbers they love to go with oh you're so sweet Amaris, for really putting that out there for me so we've talked about the mirrors so step number five is about how life happens now. You know, we're so taught to have guilt for the past and to worry about the future. You know, but when we do that, we're not living in our now. That's why, okay, let me give you a little clue, because that's why I always say that, that the angels work in just-in-time, like, like just-in-time manufacturing or Sigma-7 manufacturing. And it's, I know I bring up a lot of these terms, but that's just the way I see it. That's why I like to bring things into the reality. I like to bring things into real. Let's talk real. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, thank you, C. Bobby. So, yeah. So, the angels deal in like just in time. And what that really means is in that manufacturing sense is you don't get the part till you actually need it. That's the most efficient way that the Japanese have found to really you know, build something or to make something happen is by not having these things in storage for so long, you know, before you need it. So, a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll have we'll, we'll we'll have step ten, and we're like, I need this huge, you know, which of course we're the ones judging what's huge, this huge major part for number ten. But we're here at number one. Well, we don't need part number ten at number one. And if we had part number ten, we wouldn't be focused on number one. We'd be focused on number ten. Well, the angels know that now is all you have. Thank you, darling, for shouting out that again for me. You're so sweet. So the angels know that right now is all we have. I mean, life is happening now. And now, and now, <laughs> life is only happening right now. That's the only time life is happening. This is the only moment that you have. Anytime you make a decision to do something, anytime you make a decision to, you know, give up cigarettes or, or to eat better or to exercise more or to call that friend or to be more loving or to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I kind of, you kind of rock. Or is start a new business or whatever it is. It always has to be in a now. In some now that is going to take place, and I'm telling you from a from a from a former procrastinator, it doesn't get easier to wait for a future now, because there's always going to be a moment when you're going to have to take a leap. There's always that moment when you have to take that leap of faith, 
and you're gonna have to just like you know pull up the pull up the big boy britches. We don't need to suffer what we are free from. <laughs> you know, it's it's just about you know. There's gonna be that point in time. And of course, prepare yourself and don't jump jump until you're ready. But there's always gonna be that point where you're gonna have to take a deep breath and jump off the diving board and just know and expect that the universe has you because they so totally do. If it feels right, if the perfect place to be. I'm going to tell you, see, I'm giving you so many good ones in this right here. I'm giving you so many good ones. Oh my gosh. Yeah, jump the cold. I love that. <laughs> the perfect point is when you're terrified and excited at the same time. That's the perfect part. And you know why? Because your ego is terrified. Because your ego wants you to be safe. Your ego is really coming from a space of love. Your ego is wanting to keep you protected. And the only thing, the ego kind of comes from like a third or, oh, thank you so much. You're amazing too, love for life. Oh, thank you. Um, the ego wants to keep you safe and protected, but the ego is sort of like a three or four year old child. So the only thing the ego knows is what you've already known. So the ego would rather hold you in the space that's already known because there's some safety in that rather than letting you go, even if you know the next best thing is even better. So that's the terror part, you know, because it's trying to keep you small. It's trying to keep you protected, but it's coming from love. So don't judge it. Just know that's where it's coming from. In fact, I have a sign on my wall that says, it says, uh, I love you ego, but I ask you to go play with your toys, <laughs> you know, but in the, the excitement is your spiritual guidance. Your, your excitement that you have at that moment is, is the angel saying, you know, jump, we've got you. You know I mean? They're, they're standing right there with their arms stretched out going, jump. All you gotta do is jump. All you gotta do is, and you're really not jumping. It feels like a jump to us, but all we're doing is really stepping into who we already, already are. Oh, thank you so much. But hi from Los Angeles. That's so amazing. So yeah, it's just about how life Life happens now because back before I was mindful, you know, I would I would work hard. <gasps> Lauren Rainbow's in the house. How you doing, my darling? I so love my Lauren Rainbow. How you doing, baby? So um, yeah, and, and Sween is coming. Thank you so much. Yeah, but back before I was mindful, what I would do is I would work hard, you know, all year long, waiting for that one one week vacation I would take, and it was like life didn't happen till the vacation took. Well, what was the first thing I thought of when I would start my vacation? I would start thinking about how long I had before I had to go back to work. That was what I, so did I really have joy? Did I really enjoy that experience? I certainly didn't, I didn't enjoy the entire year I waited for the vacation. And then I didn't really enjoy the vacation because the whole time I was like, oh, I've only got six days left. I've only got five days left. I've only got four days left. I've only got three. You know what I mean? So it's about, you know, just experiencing the now and just enjoying the now and finding the things in the now, like I was talking about before with the reticular activating system, finding the things that correlate to what it is that you want to bring into your life. I used to be, and, and that was one of the reasons why I showed you that picture, those pictures of me for my driver's license. Back when those driver's license pictures were taken, you know, I was such a creature of fear, anxiety, worry, and doubt. And it was about, uh, it, it was about no whining, sketches says. It was really about me just focusing on those things. And that was absolutely what I saw because you are right, right now where you are, you're surrounded by challenges and opportunities. You're surrounded by joy and you're surrounded by fear. You're surrounded by happiness and you're surrounded by despair. You're surrounded by all of that right now. What are you going to focus on? What are you going to bring into your life? Because what you focus on is what your brain using the, uh, <laughs> okay, cool. So what it is that you focus on is what your reticular activating system from your brain uh, picks out of all the points of data that are surrounding you at any one moment. Because there's points that, you know, you have billions of points of data at any one time, you know, that are surrounding you available for you to notice. Because you can't notice everything. It's not, it would not be possible. The human brain cannot take all that in. That's what the reticular activating system is there for. And it doesn't come to it from a point of judgment. It just says, okay, what is this spirit human being focusing on? That must be what's relevant. That must be what's important. So that's what I'm going to go out there and capture and bring into the the brain is whatever they're focusing on. So when you focus on joy, those are the those are the points of data that come into your mind. When you focus on fear, those are the points of data that come into your mind. It's absolutely true. I mean, there's so many times when I'm in a city and everybody is locking their door and being scared. Not that I don't lock doors, but they're very fearful. And I, I even it was amazing to me the other day. I was speaking with somebody and they were talking about how they were going to the bad Walmart and didn't have their gun with them. And the idea of taking a gun into Walmart was so foreign to me. I just 
could not even fathom the idea of needing to take a handgun into Walmart because I know that I'm always protected. I know that I'm always surrounded by protection. Hey, Ginger Meek, how you doing? I know that there's, you know, they're really, you know, in the whole scheme of things, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. So what's the worst thing you can do? You go back into all that is. Hi, Ginger Meek, how you doing today? Thank you so much for tuning in. So yeah, it's just about you realizing that now is when your life happens. Now is when your life always happens. Now is when you're activated in life. Now is when you can, <laughs> now is when you, I know, isn't that crazy? Now, in, in the South, believe me, there's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not do you have a gun, it's do you have enough ammunition. Not with me, I've never had one, but anyway, that's really where it's coming from. But anyway, so, but it's all in your viewpoint, it's all how you look at it, it's all from your point of reference. Yes, you always, I, and you should, because you are always protected, especially when you call forth that protection and just know it's there. I mean, I know if I was intuited to walk down the darkest alley in the worst neighborhood, and it was like an intuition here in Virginia that I know I would be protected and I would be well if that was how I was intuited to do. I would I would do it if that was you know if that was my inspiration, if that was how I felt my bliss or my joy or my inspired action, I would know I'd be protected. So it's about just, you know, taking that taking that uh, you know, you can you can however you want to take it, if you want to take it as a bubble of light or if you want to ask Archangel Michael to come forth and, and protect you, put his wings around you, whatever resonates with you, absolutely, <laughs> you can do that. So those are my five steps or five keys to joyful living. And it's that the effort is not in the magic, is not the magic, it's in the focus. Uh, li life is literally what you make of it. Uh, you can write them in your be on it. Uh, others are a mirror of your energy. And life happens now, so that I think those were I think those hope those resonate with y'all. I hope those those have helped you tonight. I know I've had an absolute blast tonight talking about it. Is there are there any questions or anything uh, that anybody has? Um, I was going to kind of meet up with a friend here pretty soon. So oh, thank you, my darling. I hope it's been helpful to you. And sketches, uh, sketches. I know that you have a lot of energy coming to you right now. So really, ask Archangel Uriel to help you to channel that energy and how to deal with it and get excited about how much energy you have. And it's just about you growing into it and, and being able to, you know, uh, just start seeing yourself as this energy being. Start seeing almost like I see almost like electricity or lightning kind of going through me. And about watching it just kind of flow. You know, I, I usually see it like, you know, come up, uh, usually my uh, right leg, or, or yeah, my, light, my right foot, and then coming through my body and going back down, going back into the earth and recycling and just, you're cleansing and coming back into me. So if you start just kind of see, however it resonates for you, however you see it, but I just see it as almost like this, this, this almost like electricity or lightning, you know, passing through us. And it's about just, you know, it, it's, it's those blockages that really, you know, cause us those pain points. Uh, whether it expresses itself physically or expresses itself in uh, this, when you say others are mirrors of our energy, does that change? Mirror people are always the, you. Ch you show the world how to treat you. Are there any specific angels with us now? Hmm. You have Archangel Jophiel and uh, Archangel Gabriel is with you right now. Interesting, Suena. Yeah. So that's about you uh, clearing, decluttering your mind. And about you uh, having some type of a Archangel Gabriel deals with fertility, and that doesn't mean getting pregnant uh, necessarily. It means you know calling forth something new. It's about about it's about new birth of something, whether it's an idea or a business or a new way of thinking or new way of living. So yeah, does anybody else have any questions or comments or anything else that we can kind of delve into? Um, I don't know really how much longer I wanted to make this scope. Just how when Angel can help me with my next steps in life. So from you, Wendy, I'm really kind of getting that you really feel sort of like. Uh, blocked and and not really and really kind of lacking clarity right now. And I get from you that it's it's a point of of things that are in your past that you're really allowing to to stop you. So I'm really feeling like uh, Archangel Raziel really wants to come forth. He's one of the angels that helps us to really learn how to rethink um, <laughs> rethink you know past experiences that we've had and turn them into points of wisdom. You know it's really about being thankful for everything that's ever happened to our life. You know, I've actually come out of three three closets myself, and you know, so I'll I'll go ahead and talk about them. And, and if I had told you about this a few months back, you know, I would be in, in a puddle of tears. And you know, the reason the reason I really uh, feel like talking about this is about you know standing in your truth, about you know becoming authentic, and you know uh, not letting things you know dictate who you are. You know, but but and also about being able to take those past experiences and being thankful for every single one of them. So, 
Uh, back in 2007, I basically went through what you call the dark night of the soul. I basically exploded my life. You know, I mean, I was, I had the government job you couldn't lose. You know, I had the five bedroom home. I had the Mercedes. I had the, I had the, the family. I had the money. I had all this stuff. And I was the most miserable person that you could possibly imagine. So that's one thing I kind of want to say to you. Sometimes when you see those people that are having those perfect lives, that does not mean that they're happy and they're joyful in that moment at all. So I basically imploded my life and ended up going to prison for four months. So I basically walked out of a federal prison with $300 in the bank, a car that I still owed money on, and a few sticks of furniture in a storage building. And there was an evening where I had a bottle of wine and I was going to walk out into my garage with my PT Cruiser and turn it on, turn on the air conditioning so I'd be comfortable, drink that bottle of wine and just check out. And I, well, number one, knew that my daughter would find me. And I, number two, I just had this inkling that there was something I was going to miss out on. And so what I'm trying to say to you is, is so there's been three causes that have come out. Number one was about being gay. Number two was about being spiritual. Because, you know, telling people that you work with angels can be a little janky, especially in the South. And number three, you know, admitting that I have been in, in a federal penitentiary or federal, federal prison. And the reason I express that to you is just so that you can know that I am literally thankful for every experience I've ever had in my entire life. Because it's made me who I am today. It's made me who I am. It's about, uh, about big change. Oh, okay, girl. All right. Now, if you're ready for some, if you're ready for some big changes, all right. I'm gonna give you a secret here, but you have to be ready. Are you ready, girl? Are you really ready? Because this, this is the kick butt archangel. This is the archangel to end all archangels. If you're ready, <laughs> and I'm so thankful for all of you too. Okay, Archangel Nathaniel is the archangel of manifestation. But Archangel Nathaniel, what he will do, if you tell him, like say you tell him, okay, I want a new relationship or I want a new car, just like Oprah says, you have to have your hands open in order to receive, he will sometimes literally take away the car that you don't like that you have or the job that you like that you have right now that you don't like or the or whatever it is so that you can be ready to receive. So you just have to be ready for some movement because he's a kick butt Let's get this in gear. Let's move this archangel. So if you want real movement in life, you know, I'm, I'm almost a little hesitant a lot of times to really tell people about Archangel Nathaniel just because you have to be ready. Because I have had some people that have worked with Archangel Nathaniel who really kicked him for a loop. Really has. So just ask an Archangel yeah, yeah, be ready. That's what I'm saying because these, these Archangels don't play. Yeah, I was going to say, that's why I'm telling you. You know, I, it's, it, I, I don't always deal with Archangel Nathaniel myself. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I know I may not necessarily be ready for his energy. So if you're ready for movement, you know, he's, he's like the final one. But you can really ask uh, Archangel Michael is an amazing one. Archangel Michael is, a, is an easy, easy... You know, he's almost like the jack of all trades. Archangel Michael, you can always turn to. He's always going to be, you know, I see him as a big brother. And he's also a flirt, and he's funny as heck, and he's always doing silly things to, you know, kind of take my mind off stuff. So Archangel Michael, if, if no one else, is always an amazing, amazing Archangel to come to. He, he protects us. He's like a big brother. He's always calling us forth. He's always knowing who we are. He's so very strong and powerful. He'll help us to cut cords. He'll help us just to clear energy. He's always there to facilitate us and help us really in, in any shape, way, or form. So if nothing else, you know, Archangel uh, Michael is a great one to uh, ask to help you to move forward in your life. So until you're ready for Archangel Nathaniel. So, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, well, that would really, uh, Archangel Gabriel would be an amazing one if you're wanting to try something new. You know, Archangel, Archangel Gabriel really works with um, bringing forth uh, new ideas and Archangel Ariel is actually coming forth to me. Archangel Ariel is the Archangel that really deals with the earthly plane and that's dealing with the resources of the earth, the animal kingdom, things like that and of course what do you use in cooking? You know you use either animals or plants or you know resources from the earth so she's going to know you know what's going to naturally kind of go with each other and how to blend them and how to use them and how to and she also uh, yes and, and so yeah I think Archangel Ariel would be an amazing one just to kind of show you what's beneficial and what would work well together and Archangel Gabriel maybe to give you that extra little flair of what if I tried this because Archangel Gabriel is very very much about you know, new ideas and, and new you know what I say like say fertility but that doesn't necessarily mean getting pregnant it can be in the fertility of a new idea or a new concept 
concept. So I think Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Ariel would be amazing ones to use in cooking. And that's something I had never really thought about before. So thank you, thank you for asking. And that's and I love how you're how you're taking the archangels and you're asking them how do I use them? Because there really is nothing our our concept of bringing in universal mindset into any point of life as being small or big is up to us. Yes, they're always, they're always um do they well it's it, they're they're always there available to us but for me the way that i the way that i kind of work with archangels i see them as almost having like a different personality and like a different um sort of like uh focus in life so depending on what it is that you want to bring in whether it's you know with relationships or with mindset uh <laughs> or with your cooking or you know with abundance or you know protection or whatever it happens to be you know it depends on which kind of energy you want to bring in and uh if you don't know the specific name of the archangel that's okay just ask the angels you know to come in and help you it just it can be helpful to to know the ones you know if you have any particular questions you can certainly ask them now or you can always message me at facebook.com the angel encourager or the angel encourager at gmail.com there's probably people right here in the chat room that have you know messaged me and I've messaged them back abundance okay well cool so archangel ariel is the archangel of abundance she is she is in charge of the natural resources so she knows that there's always plentiful there's always plenty as long as you use it in a way that's that's uh, mindful and that is respectful for you know, the planet and for you know the resource that you're bringing in you know she doesn't care if you have if your bedroom if you have a 23 bedroom house as long as you're going to use that 23 bedroom house you know as long as you don't have 20 of them and you you know you, you don't ever even visit 19 of them that would be wasteful of her so as long as you don't do it in a wasteful sense but you do it in a sense that brings you happiness and brings you joy and really fits fits you and your life there's always going to be an amazing about, amount of abundance so Archangel Ariel she's also the lioness of God and she's also about courage so it's very much about you standing up for who you are standing in that point of knowing you know what it is so with abundance what I want you to really do is I want you to number one realize how abundant you are because the kings and queens of 200 years ago if they looked at how you were lived right now they would throw down all the riches they had back then and run to to go into our pro what we would call our projects of today I mean, I mean you know, because <laughs> do you know why they were wore those beautiful furs back in those days do you know why they did that so that the lice and the fleas would jump off of them onto the fur how you know and those were the kings and queens so what I'm saying to you is really embrace how abundant you are right at this moment it's number one about, about stepping into that and number two not thinking of okay I need to have this much money so that I can buy this house so that I can bring happiness and protection for my family but just start calling forth happiness and protection for your family and not really judging how it comes to you and just knowing that it will because there's a million ways for the it's almost like you see these people they want you know they really want abundance in their life and they get stuck on I have to have this one job from this one company and so they're like waiting for this one company and yes they're waiting for this one company to hire them and maybe this company is waiting for a contract to come through I mean I have an actual friend that this is happening with so literally he's sitting there with bated breath waiting for this this contract to go through so that this job comes through and do you know how many companies there are in the world and not even just companies do you know how many ways there are to bring in money in the world and you're gonna wait on one you know I mean you're an unlimited being why in the world are you gonna wait on one way so what I'm really saying to you is don't limit yourself by how things come in focus on what it is that, that brings you that sense of excitement that sense of joy if it's bringing in a certain amount of cash a month that brings you excitement and joy that's great or if it's that particular home that brings you excitement and joy that's great but just find out what it is that brings you that point of excitement that brings you that sense of joy that brings you that passion because that is your guidance from the universe from you know, God the angels Buddha Muhammad Allah Jesus however you connect <laughs> how you doing my friend <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in that is that is how we are given those signs you know that this is this is where this is what's going to take us down the path to what we want so seek those things you like like the like the uh, I can't remember who the famous author it says seek your bliss because that's really where it's at seek your joy seek your excitement seek your passion because that matches what it is that you because your higher being knows what you truly want you know your higher being even if you're not focused on what you truly want your higher being always knows so it's almost like if you imagine 
if you imagine having like a big brother that's sitting up here who knows what you really want, you sitting down here, and the only way your big brother can really communicate with you is by giving you either feeling bad or feeling good. I mean, that's your mind. That's how your body, mind, spirit system works. You know, imagine if you were a God that was going to create this wonderful human body, and you're like, I want a way to communicate with this human body, but, you know, they're already, oh, cool, I love that. <laughs> uh, that great, I love that. So anyway, um, imagine if you were a God that was going to create this body, and you thought, you know, I want to communicate with them, you know, but they already hear enough, and they already smell enough, and they already see enough, and they already feel enough on their skin. What's some way that I can bring in signs from, from the universe of, of what's going to you know, bring them down the path they want and bring the path that they don't want is through our feelings. It's by how we feel. That's how we're built. So, and we're so taught, especially as children, you know, discount your feelings, don't cry, you know, don't express yourself. And it's really about coming back into that, you know, because there, there's a there's a reason for emotions. Emotions are energy and motion. That's what they are. Feelings are simply an expression of where you are. And every feeling, every emotion is valid and has a reason. It's about not judging those feelings. It's about not saying if so and so hadn't done that to me, I wouldn't feel this way, or if I wasn't like that, I wouldn't feel this way. But just allowing yourself to feel however you feel oh oh we're bringing in the especially men yeah yeah because men are we you know especially in the, that's right you know we are we're so blocked off from our feelings a lot of us you know what i mean not really for me i mean i cry at the drop of a hat sometimes you know what i mean so and people are always like why are you laughing i'm like because i'm happy you know I mean? so i'm always expressing myself in some <laughs> in some way that's probably inappropriate socially and you know what i don't give a rip you know because my experience is my experience and it, it i think it gives people more allowance to be how they are so anyway, I can't even remember really what I was speaking to, but I hope that I really kind of answered that question. So is there, are there any other questions or comments or anything else anybody would like to really kind of discuss or, or help with or anything we can call forth for somebody? You know, we're, we're a group right now of people. Uh, oh, good. I'm so glad they have it. I, I hope so much love for life that you will. Oh, thank you, my darling, for being here. And you have such a beautiful smile. I would love for you to go to the Facebook.com, The Angel Encourager, and sign up for my newsletter. Um, and you know, just and, and check me out. Check Y'all check out my new website, TheAngelEncourager.com. I just published it today. Just published it today. So I would love, hey coach, how you doing sweetie? I would love for you to check out my new website. Just tell me what you think of it. Does it look good? You know, it's got me all, because my, my, my clients kept saying we want to see more of Pete. And I was like, okay, you know, I felt kind of like, gosh, should I plaster the site with me? So it's kind of plastered with me. So y'all just kind of tell me. Yeah, I, you know, I am, a friend of mine told me I needed to scope at least once a day. And I do actually do uh, a morning joy jam in the morning, usually around six or seven o'clock in the morning on my way to work. I do a joy jam, which is simply about stepping into joy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Because there's two really, really important times for you to step into joy. And that's when you're first conscious of being awake in the morning and when you're right about to go to sleep, those are the two most important times to step into joy, right there. And start falling, and I'll, I thank you so much, thank you so much. And if there's you know, ever any questions, you know, please, you can private message me there on Facebook.com at The Angel Encourager. <laughs> Am I too early? Well, I, and um, I did used to put my joy jams just on a regular Facebook, but I started a, I've started a little group called Boost Your Brilliance. Uh, it's basically $5 a month on a subscription. And what it is about, it's about me showing you how Pete steps into joy every day. You know, because my thing is I always tell, oh, oh, thank you. I always tell people, you know, first of all, I want you to focus on what it is that you want in life. What brings you the excitement. I want you to step into joy, take inspired action, and walk in faith. And so I have so many clients that really ask me. And if you go to my website, the new Angel Encourage talks about that on the very first home page. There's like four little videos. One's on focus, one's on joy, one's on action, and one's on faith. So I thought that was kind of cool. But anyway, I have so many clients that say, well, how do I step into joy? So I started that Boost Your Brilliance program. It's basically just a private face group book or face group Facebook group. There we go. I'll be able to speak here in just a moment. <laughs> Help me, Archangel Gabriel, with with expressing myself, because uh, she also helps with with expressing yourself as well. So it's it's called Booster Brilliance. It's five dollars a month, and it basically shows you how I step into joy. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can find that on, on my face on my um, website as well. So anyway, not you know, just if, if it resonates with you, I would love to have people join. It's brand new, so I don't have that many people in it right now. But um, I would love to see it as a growing community of people that really, you know, learn how to step into joy in every day because, you know, the more and more of us that step into joy in every moment of life and that is possible no matter what's surrounding you, there's always a point of joy, there's always an opportunity in every single challenge. 
you know, anything that's, that's brought to us, anything that we experience, you can find a way to approach it from joy because that's the way, that's the, way you, the universe approaches everything. It's in a state of joy. There's, there's a sense of joy in absolutely everything. There's a, there's a way to grow through absolutely anything that's coming at you. And when we learn to do that and we can express it and show how to, for other people how to do that, imagine what a magical world which I already feel it's a magical world, how magical it could be, you know, even more so. And it's through our example that we really show people how to live. You know, um, you can't want something more for somebody than they want it themselves. And as I say that, I'm speaking really to myself because I have a dear friend right now who I'm trying to pull them up. And I always have to be mindful of not reaching down and trying to pull them up. Because what happens when you reach down and try to pull somebody up? You get off your point of center and they just pull you down with them. And then you get you know, in a desperate mode. Then you're both pissed off. <laughs> so it's about you standing in your truth. It's about you standing in your joy. And just being that shining example of what's possible in life. You know, because, um, you know, I used to be 320 pounds. You know what I mean? I'm 52 years old. I am in the best physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual shape in my entire life. I literally have four businesses right now that are about to explode. They're literally about to explode. I am at the point of where I, I have made a commitment to myself that I want to bring everything into my life that I've ever desired. And that's actually absolutely what's happening for me. And so what I'm wanting to say to you, it's completely possible at any age. <laughs> How did I do it? Well, with the weight loss in 2007, I had gastric bypass. But, you know, that's, that's just a tool. It's not, you still have to learn how to eat. You still have to exercise. When people ask me, should I have gastric bypass? I really tell them no, because it's very, it can be very dangerous. I'm only one of two people that I know that have had gastric bypass. It's not either fatter, an alcoholic, or dead. You know, everybody else I know that's had it, and I know quite a few people that have had gastric bypass, it has not been good for them at all. I was one of the very few lucky ones, but I really had to, I still had to learn how to eat right. I still had to learn to exercise. I still had to learn all these different things. And now I have to deal with malabsorption and these other different types of things that aren't really stopping me from really absorbing the bad things. They're really kind of helping me, stopping me from absorbing the good things. So that's why I always tell people it's just a tool and there's other tools out there that I really think are better and not so extreme. So, but that's the way that, that I, you know, I guess that was, you know, that's, I would have to give that disclaimer that that is how I guess I started the weight loss, but you know, it was not, it was not easy anyway. <laughs> so I guess enough for me tonight. If there's any other questions or comments or anything like that before we go, um, anything else that we can talk about or maybe we'll just do a little bit, uh, a little bit of chair dancing right now. Uh, one thing I think is really important to just kind of speak about is that, you know, we have, you know, mind, body, and spirit. So oftentimes if you can't change your thoughts and beliefs, and I understand, you know, I've been in that, that little hamster wheel where it just keeps going through and through and through. We have these amazing brains that love to, that will match, you know, what we're really put forth. So say you're in a, in a, in a state where you're feeling anxious or fearful and you're in that sympathetic system, you're in that fright or flight. What you can do is you can mimic somebody that's being relaxed. And one thing that you can, and the one easy way to do that is through your breath. And you want to breathe in your belly. You want to see your belly go out. You want to just take deep, conscious belly breaths, like somebody would do that was relaxed. And as you do that, as you breathe as somebody who is relaxed, what happens is that your brain waves begin to mimic somebody that's relaxed. And then you become relaxed. So you can trick, you can trick your brain into mimicking however you want it to do. If you wanted to get anxious, you could start breathing fast like somebody that was anxious and you would, your brain would absolutely get back into that mind. But the idea is that our natural state of being is joy. That's why when you're in a state of joy, when you're in a state of happiness, you have so much energy and your brain feels so clear and you have so much clarity. You know what I mean? And you don't ever ask yourself, why am I happy? Why am I joyful? You know what I mean? And you also feel like even if you're in a room by yourself, you feel so surrounded because you have all those energies that you're not tapped into. And when you're in fear, you can be in a room full of 3,000 people and you can feel lonely. And also when you're in fear, anxiety, and worry, and doubt, you're also very tired. And why is that? Because you have to keep yourself in that state because it's not your natural state of being. And you notice when you're in fear, those little hamster wheels that keep running keep reminding you of why you're fearful and anxious and depressed. So what, the point I really want to make is that joy really is your natural state of being. 
And there's so many ways for you to step into it. If you can't get your brain to, get your body to. You know, start moving. Just start, you know, that's why I think that was the point I was trying to make is that when you just do like a little chair dance, if you're in a state of depression, start moving your body like your body was happy. What would you, how would you move your body if you were happy? You know what I mean? Start doing that and watch, and watch it change. Or smile at yourself in the mirror. And at first, it may it may take you a while to do it, but if you make the practice of doing it, you can absolutely change the way your brain works. And I'm a living testament to that. Seven years ago, I could not look at my face in the mirror. I literally had to shave out of the corner of my eye because I could not stand my own reflection. And today, there's not a reflective surface I pass, honey, without taking a look at me like, that's, that's it right there. That's the one. That's who I want to be. And guess what? It is who I be. So, <laughs> anyway... Any other questions or comments or anything like that? Yes, and I want you to know that you are power. I want you to know that you're beautiful. There is nothing wrong with that. You don't want to be narcissistic, but you want to be convinced that you are the bomb. You know, because everything happens through you. And if you don't feel good about yourself, you can't feel good about anything else. If you don't, you can't give out to somebody else what you don't give to you. So love yourself first. That's what I want. And I want you to know how much I love and appreciate every single one of you. And how much I believe in every single one of you. I believe in every single one of you so much. I can see the amazing possibilities right there in front of you. If you will only accept that you're worth it. If you will only accept that it's possible and that you can do it. And how do you do it? By just stepping in the joy and taking that inspired action and walking in faith. That's how you do it. It's not about your efforting. It's about you just allowing it to be and just accepting it that that's who you are. I see so much for every, so if there's ever a time when you're doubtful in yourself, know that Pete believes you in you and Pete loves you. And more than that, more even than that, the angels and the universe believes in you and loves you so much. And I can just feel it like coming down, flowing through my eyes out here to each one of you. I want you to let yourself be wrapped, wrapped in that warm cocoon of, of love and joy and belief in you, each one of you personally. I want you to wrap yourself in that, accept it, and enjoy it, just argh, love it. That's what I want each and every single one of you to do. So, thank you for listening. It's been amazing. It's been so amazing. And I'm just gonna say love, peace, and peace.